Hey, what's up guys? Today is February 1st and um, historically this is the time where I, um, I it's, it's really important for me to start getting into it because it seems like I do this every year, right? The first year I thought it was just for that time. Then it happened in last year where I started really work, getting into work like March and um, somehow I find myself here again. So I guess it's just something I do. I like to take two to three months for vacation. <laughs> before I start getting into it. But but um, today's February 1st, I wanted to lay out two videos today that's gonna keep me accountable. Number one is, um, what the hell I'm gonna sell this year, right? And, and and I'm gonna, you know, talk about that in this video. And then I'm gonna make another video today, which is gonna be um, my goals, right? So goals for 2020. And specifically goals set in a way where I'm gonna really make sure that, um, you know, how to track them properly and be on top of it so I don't have another year like 2019. Um, so let's let's get into it. First of all, I took some notes here for what I'm gonna sell. Now, if you guys have been watching me for some time, you know that my main thing is SEO. It's the only product I sell and um, the pinnacle of that product is Maps, right? And, um, you know, I've I've, done a bit more research than I usually do over the last couple of months in terms of talking to people and um, seeing what can work. And one of the things that I, I was really getting excited about is having Facebook ads. So I'm gonna talk about these things in this video about things you can sell while you're growing your agency um, and you know, products if you can figure out to deliver well that go really hand in hand, right? Where you can have an increase of, you know, like you can pretty much double your agency a lot of times in a very like short amount of time or um, in you know relatively very little amount of effort um, if you're able to find, you know figure these things out. So I'm gonna talk about a couple of those things. So so first of all, okay, maps, number one, right? So that's the first thing, right? Even if you're a niche that has Google guarantee and all this stuff, I've seen the data across the board, maps still crushes it. Right, so for local businesses, that's still the number one. I still come across people who are doing local business and their main thing they're trying to rank is organic listings under the maps, which it doesn't make sense to me how it's still like a thing, honestly, um, um, but, but it still happens. I still see it. Um, not as much as before, but yeah, that's one thing. Secondly is a bunch of things that normally we, we mention to the clients we're doing that falls under our delivery for a SEO, right? Such as on-page link building, uh, we mentioned press releases and a few other things. So um, uh, some of them honestly are more like a reporting tool than um, an SEO tool. Like for example, we do content, right? Before I used to not always do content, but nowadays we do content for all clients. Now some of you guys, especially if you come from like a background where you're building PBNs, you know, and, and you know, like getting most of your power and stuff like that through that, you might be like, for local, why do you need more content? Like, why do you need blogs and stuff? Well, aside from the slight benefit it could have for SEO over time as it builds up the site for more relevant topically, topically being relevant and whatnot, it's also an easy way to report to clients that things are happening every week to week, month to month. As I kind of touched on in the last video, I'm trying to move away from having to manually report to clients um, and then really bring that down to a very um, you know, minor uh, uh, number, right? Maybe for clients that are paying over $3,000 will be um, one that could be getting it, but anybody other than that wanna be in a position where they can kind of just see what's going on. If that takes to shift over to be an activity type reporting, then I'll do some of that, right? They'll kind of be able to easily see that we're doing content, we're building these things one to one because it's gonna save me the time to look into manually what's going on and then have to like make a video or something giving them a breakdown of what happened last month, which is very annoying to do. So anyways, that's a little sum up of those little items. Now, the two biggest items that I'm going to talk about in this video is again, Facebook ads and one more item. And this I'm not sure yet exactly what it's gonna be, but I'm going to kind of give you guys some idea of my thought process behind it so you can see how it can go hand in hand with your agency. So first of all, one second, let me open my shoes. Ah, get comfortable here. All right, so first of all, for Facebook ads, let's talk a little bit about it. 
We've been doing a little bit of research um, with a few people that we basically hired as consultants and then one guy actually who I know from YouTube who have been working together for the last, um, you know, like basically he's been kind of running it actually, trying to figure out how the um, Facebook ads could work. And the reason behind why we're trying Facebook is because naturally that is the, that is the next place people go to, right? One of the easiest ways to upsell your current clients is going to be, um, you know, if they're getting a good delivery from your SEO, they're paying fifty hundred two thousand dollars easy upsell to $1,200 to another $1,500, taking them from $2,000 to $3,500 client with Facebook ads, right? Now, the problem with Facebook ads is that, and I'm pretty sure some people who watch this are gonna be like, oh my God, they're not doing it properly. But the problem is, it doesn't work. <laughs> Or, or, or I can say we, we can't figure it out, right? Just being upfront here. We've, we've seen a couple people try to do it, uh, you know, initially everybody's like, oh yeah, of course, you know, Facebook ads, it's the easiest, you know, we always do this. When we really get into it, I see that it's not really working in the same way what we call it as work. So for me to a little bit give you a breakdown in case there's somebody who comes across this and, you know, I'll be willing to sit down with people if they think they can do it. Um, but basically what we're looking for is somebody who can deliver results to cold traffic, right? They can't have huge qualifications. They can't have insane like um, um, uh, requirements to make it work. Local business owner d doesn't get much business. If you can run Facebook ads for them, um, for a roofer, like a contractor and generate leads, that's what we're looking for. So far, what we have been trying, we find out that, oh, okay, it's gonna need, you know, like we need like thousands of visitors coming to their website already so we can retarget them. Like, okay, that's, you know, we can go for those clients, but it doesn't mean that we can sell this product to everybody. That's one. Number two um, is that, oh, they need to be in a big city because otherwise the targeting gets messed up. Okay, again, we can do that. It's kind of the same for SEO in a lot of cases. Um, you know, you can't really, like, SEO maps doesn't really work if the city is tiny, right? It needs some kind of search volume. But again, it kind of limits the thing. Now, that's just like one side, which would be fine. But then what happens is that when the leads do come in, they're like crazy to convert. Like, the sales reps would be, have to be trained. Like, the, we would need to do a class like for the first couple of weeks to make sure the sales reps in the business we're doing it for can convert these leads because they're not like normal leads. You know, from Google when people call you, they just call you and they're like, hey, I need this. And you're like, all right, what's your address? Whereas in Facebook ads, it seems like they're gonna have to go through all this kind of way to scrub the lead just to make sure that the guy remembers it did in fact fill this out. So that's what I mean when I say it doesn't work. Like it's just too much complex things to scale it. And I know if it kind of breaks when we're trying to do it with like two, three clients, it's definitely gonna break when I try to get to like 30, 50 clients, right? So that's the thing with Facebook ads. Very exciting, very like, um, I mean, just exciting. If it worked, it'll be like, holy shit. Roll it out to the rest of the clients. Look, let's make this happen. Super win-win situation. They're getting a good delivery from SEO. Now Facebook ads come in and become another source of leads for them. They're crushing it. Average retainer for the whole agency for me would go to like around 3,500. That would be beautiful. But that's the thing. So that's my little thoughts on Facebook ads right there. Second product is, um, and this is the one that I'm not sure about. This is what I'm, 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 I'm contemplating on a bit more. And that is basically something to offer which can be sold as a foot in the door for, um, for, for you know, SEO clients who can't afford the service. So as you guys know, my thing, like we don't really, like I see uh, a lot of uh, sales, for, uh, um, you know, to get clients, their strategy is um, very like systematic, right? Like uh, normal, first we get the clients for this $200 per month uh, package, make sure they get the delivery from that. And then once they're going good, then we pitch them on a base level audit or something like that. Then we deliver on that. Then we get them on the big retainer for $2,000 SEO. And this is the value ladder, all the stuff. This kind of stuff, I never tried it. I, I never even do it. Honestly, I don't even like really think, I, like I don't even like it. Like, I don't like to make it all this stuff, right? My thing is really about like understanding very well how to sell one product 
and show the value of that and then just go hard with that and basically get people for that and if they don't can't afford that or it doesn't work for them then that's it then we just drop the clients right i mean then we just don't make the sale and we move on and that's how it's been for the whole time now more recently what i've been thinking is that since there is a good amount of people that come on that um don't that can't afford the service right and this is especially if you're running some facebook ads which we have been and we see a lot of we, we get people that are not like qualified right they're not our ideal clients basically and it is annoying because it forces me to kind of always think about taking on a client who i know is not gonna be a good fit like they're they're, they're barely doing any work they're huffing and puffing right now they're they're making an investment thinking seo is gonna put food on the table like next month it's like it's like that right so um without going too much into that what i was thinking is okay for these kind of guys since it costs money to run ads and i need to like at least make sure i'm breaking even in this shit um if i was to put it in a position where um they, there's a small offer for like 197 to 297 that makes sense for these guys who are small businesses and actually provides value like you know it'll help them out what would that be and what I came up with is number one, the first, by far probably the best one is a review tool, right? Really like any review tool. There's like hundreds of these in the market, right? And if you guys were to get these guys properly set up with a review tool, it, what would happen is that they would start building their reputation and, you know, get a, usually people who buy review tools, as long as the review tool works, they're happy with it. This is one thing I realized, like, um, um, sometimes I get like really envious of this because in SEO, for us to get a smile out of our client's face is pretty difficult, right? We have to do a lot of shit to make sure that end result is great. For reviews, they buy, if it generates reviews <laughs> the way it's supposed to, clients are happy, right? Like lots of review tools have thousands of, you know, uh, 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 reviews they get on their platform that people are happy customers. So anyways, um, it's, a, it's an easy thing to sell. It's low cost, right? Generally, um, I mean, I haven't looked in the market. I knew one of the good ones was like RepLoop, but they got bought out by Gradus or something. They went from being eight bucks a month to like $67 a month, so fuck them. <laughs> but, but um, um, wait, what was I was saying? I forgot my train of thought. Easy to sell, makes sense, delivers value for them. Like it is probably one of the best things they can do for their business at that price point, especially two, 300 bucks. They, you know, um, uh, uh, you guys basically would be setting them up and then they would be um, you know, in a place where they actually build a reputation on their Google listing, something they own and stop doing it on their, whatever their platform is they're doing it on right now. If they're, if they are any, which for a lot of people we see is like home advisor, like, you know, they don't own that shit and home advisor harasses them a lot regarding like leads to get even for like brand searches anyways um so that's that's one thing and then the last part which is why it makes it such a good product um is because they become more qualified to buy the seo service right not only they're like you know more qualified because you have the client's business and trust so you can sell it easier but it's because um their reputation looks good now right if they have five six reviews and then about three to four months from now they have like i don't know 20 30 40 reviews they will get much more results if they got into seo and they were ranked that listing that has 40 reviews versus five so all around it i would say a review tool to sell alongside with your um seo agency is is really good now with this there's a couple other things that can be good as well Number um, second, after the review tool, and you can do this in a package. It doesn't have to be just a review tool. You could probably do this in a package and it could all round it be a good product. Second thing could be like um, IFTTT, right? A little bit more of troublesome to set up, but if they're already posting on social media, if they're all like a lot of people kind of post once a week or something like that by themselves, local contracts, you know, like I'm seeing more and more people do that. It's not like um, they're all, already always need a social media manager. If they're doing that, you can kind of just show them like, hey, look, these are the other platforms that you guys don't have. We'll create these and we're going to make sure these are going to be posted. A little bit more setup, but it's still more or less one time and it gets syndicated to everywhere else that they do it. And boom, that's a good offer, right? If you were to put those two together, I would say you're pretty much definitely like you could definitely sell that for like around two or three hundred dollars. Um, no problem. 
And another thing, now I didn't write these down. There's a couple I was thinking about um, to mention in this video. There's another one that is really good. It was to do with actually, you know, creating a way where you can have, um, you know, actually basically schedule out their GMB posts. I think that's what it was, yeah. So for your niche, you know, if you guys are targeting one niche, shouldn't be too hard to put together like 50, 100 posts for the year and then using something like DBA platform or whatever, you know, there's so many to um, schedule out posts week to week um, in the GMB. Again, something that helps their GMB overall, you know, those review posts actually becomes pages for the GMB and, you know, depending on how you use it with the site and everything, you can go pretty ninja with it and actually have some great results. But um, basically, these are like three things. You, if, if people want, they can do all three. That's a lot of value for 300 bucks, right? Somebody comes on board, they can't really afford $2,000 per month SEO campaign. They're pretty much, you know, like, like a, a, a small business getting started, whatnot. Hey, 300 bucks, why don't you guys build your reputation, um, um, get more activity in the Google environment for your business, and also signals coming overall from your social media and start posting on this thing, and we'll this, do this setup that takes care of this, right? Then you can probably get one VA to just take care of this entire thing. So somebody you pay four, 500 bucks a month who deals with like, I don't know how many they could deal with, but probably a lot of clients. I think they could just do the setups. Let, let's say they take two days to set up one client, right? And then make sure that some, if some things get full, they have to check up on some things month to month. You could probably get one person to get like about 50 to 100 of these clients, just ballparking, right? Um, and, and, and it's a great value. So that's pretty much it. Where are we at? 17 minutes, right? Okay, so yeah, I guess I could stop here. There's a few more things I wanna talk about, but these would be the main two things that I'm kind of contemplating on introducing to the agency this year as we go forth. Um, Facebook ads, if it works, and, and something like this where, um, you know, for current clients, probably going to just give it to them for something very cheap, like let's say 150 or something like that. And then for anybody new who can't, um, you know, that who's just not gonna, who's not gonna be, you know, basically able to afford the service, um, they can be down closed to something like 297 and boom, we still be a part in their business. Um, and, and, you know, set really good expectations. Uh, this is not the type of product that they should be calling the business for. Um, um, so it's one time that, you know, all those things people say like, oh yeah, my clients don't bug me, they email me and stuff like that only, you know, they're not allowed to call me. Well, this is the type of product that they probably shouldn't be allowed to call you, right? It's, 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 it's too little um, investment on their side for them to be always being on the phone with you. But um, all things being said, hope that, hope that you know, uh, give you guys some ideas on how you can, um, you know, introduce some new things to get a lot more revenue for um, relatively very little amount of effort. Peace.